community this is Tommy and welcome to another musical adventure I am glad that you're here today now regular watchers to my channel hey regular watchers thanks so much for watching if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel hit that bell notification all that good stuff it's great to have you along and thanks for tuning in and today is a discussion topic now regular followers of my channel know that this is the time of year if you go back and watch this time of year, I always do a record crawl with my friend Sean. Hi, Sean! And uh, we go and we hit up all these record stores and buy a lot of stuff and go crazy. Last year's video was a blast. Uh, Sean was there, my friend Sam St. John, my friend Ross, Beetle Brad made an appearance. We saw Dylan from Noble Records. Uh, we did a an epic record crawl and it's probably one of my most favorite adventures that I've ever done. This year was a little different. We scaled back a lot, and we didn't go to really any new places. And so there's going to be, probably in the next week or so, a here's what I got video. Uh, but because there was no real, like, here's a new record store, here's someplace we haven't been, I'm not going to do that because I want to have a discussion, and I hope that this sort of snowballs into something that you guys participate in. Uh, I love VC discussions, and so I want us to get our... Uh, heads to turning uh, and you guys make a video I want to encourage you to make a video if you do put the link in the comments down below now look if you're not inclined to make a video and you just wanna you know whatever go ahead and put your thoughts down there uh, we welcome everything and, and I try to uh, respond to as many comments as I can and so um, like I said it's up to you but please make a video and if you know someone that doesn't watch my channel on a regular basis uh, and you want to send them my way, copy the link and send it over to them and tell them to t check it out and get their thoughts. Some of you as collectors have probably had conversations like this. And, um, you know, I want to know what you think. Uh, now, my wife calls it the sickness. Uh, for lack of a better word, I'll describe it that way. But uh, I was having one of those, you know, ph philosophical discussions with, with my friend Sean about collecting records and, and how we go about it and what we do and what we don't do. I fortunately, are, you know, am very lucky to have a space that I can grow my collection. Now, I do pull stuff out and I call it and, and all that stuff. I think anybody with a sizable collection has to do that. But I do have the luxury of space. Some of you may or may not... Uh, and this may apply to that, but we amass more and more, more and more and more and more records. Uh, we go out, we, we have these specific things that we look for, we buy them, we, 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 we pile these things up, and then at some point we go, okay, this, this, and this. And then there's those artists that we, we, we just love, um, and we tend to just buy when stuff comes out, we, we get it. Um, now, I've talked before on my channel about how I s have sort of pulled back a little bit on, on some of it because it's a little too academic for me to have like six pressings of the same LP. Um, and so for, for my benefit, I'm like, which one am I going to listen to? That's the one to keep. Maybe someone else can enjoy this other one. Uh, and so I try to use that approach. Uh, now, that's not true for everything, but, <laughs> but again, the sickness. But uh, Sean and I were talking about sort of some of the records this year that, that we're enjoying. And uh, I was talking about uh, a couple of things. And I'm not going to go into detail about the titles. But there was one artist in particular that I'm a huge fan of. And Sean basically was, I don't have time for that. Like, uh, it's not that it's bad. It's not that I hate it or anything like that. I just don't have time to listen to that. And so I'm not going to buy these records because I'm not going to listen to it. Fair enough. I think that is a fair thing to say uh, because I have artists like that I'm with. As a matter of fact, on the record crawl, there was somebody that I'm kind of interested in. I probably will like. Um, I have a feeling I will enjoy. And there was a couple of times that I picked up one of this person's records 
and I was holding it in my hand thinking, do I really want to pull the trigger and go there and buy this? Uh, I don't know. And I ended up putting it back. Because here's the thing, and this is the sickness, and this is what I'm kind of getting at big picture, is that we tend to go into these artists and these bands and this musical genre or whatever that we really, really like, and we, we kind of stay in that lane. Now, me, I have a wide variety. I like country music. I like blues music. I like jazz music. I like rock. I like hard rock. You know, there's a whole number of things, and if you've seen my channel, you know I've, I've shown a variety of genres and styles here, uh, and I like a lot of music. Now, there are some things that I don't like, and there's some artists that I, that I just am not a fan of. Um, and so I know that I'm not, it's not going to do me any good to go out there and, and, and just, you know, go buy a bunch of records of, of these people because I probably won't listen to them. And they're, they're fine artists. They're okay. And, you know, there's this sort of thing of like, who do you want to take up space in your home versus who are you okay just listening to on the radio? Um, all of these things factor into this. And so there's no like direct question and direct answer. Uh, it's just a thought. But one of the things, like, in that I don't have time for that, and I realized in my older age, is that there are some artists that I've just kind of steer clear of because there may be a chance that I really will like it. And if I do like it, it's not enough to just like that one song or that one album. The sickness leads me to say, no, I have to have all of it. Uh, and, and, and that becomes problematic. Um, and it becomes problematic. Some of you may not have this problem. Some of you may be totally fine saying, I've got the greatest hits of blah, blah, blah. That's all I'll ever need. I'm never going to go any deeper. People like me, people like Sean, and perhaps some of you out there have this compulsive need to say, no, 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 I need to check out more of this stuff. Even the really bad stuff. Bob Dylan's a great example Big career, lots of stuff, and there are some bad records in Bob Dylan's catalog, and I have them. Uh, now, I don't listen to them as much. Uh, I'll return to them once in a while and give them a shot. Uh, maybe even for no other reason, just to remind myself of how much I dislike it, which is a possibility, which is really weird. One of the albums that I picked up this weekend, I'll give you a preview, was uh, a reissue, and it was R.E.M.'s Around the Sun. Uh, this is an album that I did not have on vinyl, uh, and it got reissued uh, this past week. And this is an album that came out in 2004, and I didn't like it. Uh, I can easily say this is my least favorite R.E.M. album. Um, it's an album I've probably listened to maybe half a dozen times, in the 20 years that it's come out and it's never stuck with me. I even listened to it rather recently in the hopes that, well, maybe I missed something the first few times. Maybe as an older person, I'll appreciate this album more. Uh, even the members of the band kind of disowned this album after it came out. This was almost really kind of the beginning of the end. Uh, now they did rally and make a couple of other really nice records uh, to finish out their, their career, uh, which is a great, sort of story, but this was an album where it felt like a band was, was simply going through the motions and not trying to make a great record. Um, now, I do have this vinyl reissue, and I'm going to listen to it, and I can't make any promises that I'm going to like it any better, but I remember when I went to, uh, to check out to get the record, um, I, I, I bought, was buying it, and I was holding my nose, and he kind of was laughing. He was like, so, uh, yeah. But I have to have it. And why? Because I love R.E.M. They're one of my favorite bands of all time. Um, just absolutely such a fan. And the completest in me says that I've got to have it. Um, so that's it. And what it comes down to is I find it amusing that I will have a... I will buy a record that I know that I dislike, that I know that I'm not a fan of. This isn't a record that, you know, I would rank highly. And forego a record that I possibly would like by an artist I might enjoy getting into. 
But I find in my older age, and this is something that I'm accepting and I'm admitting about myself, uh, in my older age, I'm becoming more and more sort of closed off to new music. Now, some of you guys are like, you know, you may do Spotify and Pandora, which I don't, and you're constantly searching for new things. And there are new bands that, that I get into, and there's something that'll, that'll grab a hold of me that I'll, I'm really, like, fired up about. But I remember, you know, 20, 25 years ago, I was sort of, like, firing off, like, just in discovery phase. And, and discovering all this great music and all these wonderful albums that I love to this day. Uh, and I'm not saying music was better then than it is now, and that's why. I'm not going to get into that, that debate. I, I think there's probably still really, really awesome music being recorded. Um, but having said that, um, you know, there's probably a lot of these people that I pass up whose, <laughs> whose worst album is better than this <laughs> and like i said but i'm i'm going to go out and shell out the money and buy the rem records because that's what i do but uh it's it's sort of an interesting conversation so if there's a question in all of this and and i don't want to get too deep into a tangent do you kind of find yourself closed off to new music i i, I really kind of admire you guys that are constantly like grabbing new things and to this day you're still like finding these records and these these sort of things that are that are out there but then you got people like me that are going to go buy an album of brian wilson brushing his teeth because it's brian wilson and i know it's not going to be among the best stuff that he's done but i'm going to buy it just because i love brian wilson and i'm a fan and i have to have it in this sort of mentality call it obsessive compulsive the sickness whatever it is that I'm just going to compulsively sort of have to have those those records in my collection because I have to have all of them or have to be complete. Or once you kind of go down that, that rabbit hole of, well, I've started here, so now I have to follow through and get the rest of them. Um, completism, being a completist, however you want to call it, I, I'm not sure. But... Um, you know where where are you guys on this? Do you do you do you have the ability to just say, you know what, that album's garbage. I'm not going to listen to it. I'm not going to waste my time with it. I'm I'm just it doesn't exist in my world. Or does your love for the artist sort of supersede, no matter what junk they may or may not put out, that you have to like you know have it or you have to have it in your collection. And, and again, that goes back to this thing I've talked about before. There's a difference between collectors and, you know, fans. Uh, there's a thing there. Um, there was an old joke that I had years ago with, with Sean about David Bowie in particular. Because David Bowie in the early 2000s was, like, constantly reissuing. It felt like reissuing his catalog and albums his catalog. There's like 80,000 versions of Ziggy Stardust out there. And I, I kind of made the remark, David Bowie's for collectors. And what I meant by that was that if you were into David Bowie and that's all you're you're about, then it's easy because then you just you know, or if you're and you can apply that to anybody, the Beatles, um, you know, if that's kind of that's your musical wheel, wheelhouse, that's where you're going to stay in that lane. I'm going to listen to the Beatles, collect Beatles, Beatles related stuff. You kind of have this 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 sort of world that you get to work within. And financially speaking, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of Beatles stuff out there, and it can run the pocket. I'm, I'm sure watchers like Beetle Brad, we'll, 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 we can talk at more depth about that. But, you know, when you got people like me, that the Beatles are not the only band that I, that I collect or the only band that I'm into. I'm into all these other bands. And so it's a constant sort of thing where something new's coming out. There's this deluxe box set. There's this new unissued album, blah, blah, blah. The reissue, the remaster, the remix, you know, it's just a, a barrage of things that just keep, keep, keep coming out all the time. And people like me are just going to keep, 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 keep buying it. Um, in the hopes that we're, we're always chasing down that better version or whatever it may be. But um, do you have room for new music? Do you still discover things? Um, maybe some of my older watchers that are still out there discovering new music, do you find you still get excited about certain artists or bands? I mean, I, I mean I'm still open to that. I, I don't want to say that I'm just completely closed off, but that whole thing, you know, the whole impetus of this was I don't have time for that. 
And it's not that I don't have time for it because I think it's terrible or because why would I waste my time listening to this this stuff? But it's like I tend, I've got a stack of records right over here that I, some of these have been in here for like seven, eight, nine years that are records that I've just not listened to. I bought at some point or picked up. Somebody gave it to me. And they're kind of in this little stack of to listen to. And meanwhile, I'm going back and listening to A Love Supreme for the 50 millionth time. Um, you know, and I've tried to be good about saying, okay, I've got to go into this and start knocking this stuff out. But I mean, I could probably spend the next month going through this this pile of records and, and listening to them and, and getting caught up to them. But hey, where are you? Um, you know, I don't know how I'm going to phrase this. I'll, I'll come up with a title. But uh, talk about it. Let me know. I mean, do you buy albums that you know are terrible by bands you love? Um, you know, are you compulsive like me and have to have it? Whatever the case may be, I've rambled on long enough. This video has probably been too long. Thanks for sticking with it and following to the end. I hope you guys get involved. I hope you guys make videos maybe a little more concise than mine. Maybe the answer is a lot more simple and I've complicated it in some way. Um, you can call me out on that. That's fine. Either way, I'm glad you stuck around. Thanks for watching. Hey, we'll see you next time.